Adam's homebrew. Coming at you. What is going on today? What's going on? What is going on? We have got, hopefully, a great beer from oh. Larmo22, a homebrewer. He home did brewer. send us some beer. He did send us some beers. He did. And so, up and coming tonight, we have got the O'Connor from O'Connor Brewing. Mm. The Great Dismal Black IPA. Tell us about the Black IPA, Christian. Well, I mean, this one is kind of special because they named it after the wildlife refuge, um, the Great Dismal Swamp, in uh, southeastern Virginia and uh, northeastern North Carolina. So, I mean, it was once used as uh, one of the, part of the waterways. Intercoastal yeah. waterways. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, yeah. name it after a swamp and everything. Yeah. You know, so, um, I, I don't know. I mean, most beers could probably live up to a swamp flavor, so... <laughs> Ouch. Ow. So oh, we'll see. Judging. Yeah, yeah. So let's hope that it's a great brew. We'll see. So this one's a 7.5% ABV, which puts it right on the border of Imperial. Right we're not really expecting border. that. And it's a big 65 IBUs. Ooh. So this there should be fun. So we're going to get cracking. You can see we've got about a half a finger head on this. You can see through it. It's not completely black. I'm getting some red on the edges. In fact, I can even see through the middle. I, mean, I can see through the middle. Yeah, it's yeah. nice and so, clear, though. I mean, there's really nothing in there, which I've, is nice. I've had people say it pours black. Does not pour black. Does not pour black. Yeah. It's not opaque. So, but so, gosh, no. that is that is dark. It's got you know the red color in it from a regular IPA, but it's yeah, and it's not a haze on this either. It's uh, at all. Yeah, no. Oh man, that is clear. Yeah. All That's right. a nice beer. Let's uh, let's take a whiff or a nose. First thing I get right away are the malts. The malts yeah. come through very strong on this. Nice malts on and there. some uh, a little bit of roastiness on the malts. Yeah, there's definitely roastiness on these malts. I mean, you can. There's, there's some coffeeness in it. Yeah, I get some like earthy, kind of an earthy scent mm -hmm. off it, probably earthy from scent. the type, whatever hops it is that they it's use. It's the swamp scent. There you go. And I got a little bit of chocolate yeah, off this now. A little now. bit of chocolate, a little bit of coffee. I mean, now, I'm little, not getting the coffee, but I'm sure you are. I get and a little bit of coffee, but I also get a little bit of the IPA hint, like you get a little hops in there. Boy, it's hard to pick up the hops. Like I said, I got the earthy side of a hop. And I've got, I want to say, oh, almost yeah. a Tootsie Roll chocolate scent. We used that once before, but yeah. almost that kind of a chocolate scent. I can definitely get some hops in there. I'll tell you that. Definitely sweet and some dark and brown malts off of that. Yeah, some good malts in there. Almost a... I mean, you're really not... Yeah, like you said, you don't like get that much of a head. It's almost like a chocolate chip cookie. Dark like chocolate, a fresh chocolate, chocolate chip, chip cookie. cookie. Anyway, <laughs> which I don't know if I've had that scent off of a, a beer before. I still get IBUs in there, so don't worry. It smells like a black IPA to me, and I'm excited. Dad. All right. Cheers. Here we go. It tastes darker than it looks. That is amazing. Hold on. Yeah, it's closer to a bitter chocolate taste from the chocolate aspect. Wow. Some sweetness, certainly. Mm -hmm. you, get, you get sweetness from the malt. There's no question about that. The chocolate flavor, flavor makes me think more of a baker's chocolate. Um, yeah, going towards that range. Mm -hmm. It really... You know, I'm actually surprised because it's not as of an IPA style as I was yeah, the, thinking. The, well, I mean, the West Coast, you expect those juicy hops, you know. You get a lot a lot more of the juicy hops. Uh, East Coast, I don't know, I'm generalizing, you know. And you get I was a lot more expecting a little bit more resins resin, and, pines, exactly. Yeah, yeah, bitter, you know. But I'm not getting, I'm not getting the getting, bitterness. I'm, I'm getting a slight bitterness. I mean, it's it's coming in, but gosh, you're getting a lot of those chocolates in there. Like 
this is a light, actually the texture of this is a light beer. Yeah, it is a light beer. This is really not a medium body, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. The only disappointing aspect of it is that it's not, it's not pulling, I'm not, I'm not perceiving the IBUs off this that I would expect. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting the, I get the slightest bit of pine. I, I think, makes me think of a dried pine needles, not fresh pine needles, mm -hmm. but dried pine needles has more of a woody taste to it. I think uh, uh, the Great Dismal is more like it. It's like a dead pine scent. <laughs> but that might be harsh, but um, that's kind of what I'm getting off that. I'm used to it. I get the chocolate scent. I get the, the you know, I get the semi-hoppiness. But it's very light in ho hoppiness, mm -hmm. which is yeah. kind of confusing. But you got a lot of carbonation in there, which is nice, which you don't expect. Like... It's almost drinking like, I would say, a porter. Okay. So it's it's got so much carbonation, and that's where I'm getting confused is because you get carbonation on some IPAs, but you definitely don't get a lot of carbonation on porters, but it tastes like the porter, you know? Mm. But it would really be sweet for a porter, right? I find oh, most yeah. porters... Um, but it's also sweet, don't have that much sweetness sweet to for them. IPA, though, too, because yeah. IPAs are a little bit more bitter. And it's light bitterness. So, but I mean, there is a murkiness to it, kind of like a swamp, where you can't quite get what's going on in there. I, I truly think that they, they, named they made the beer correctly, and then they <laughs> named the beer after trying it. In they fact, named I, it quite I correctly, think they made the whole batch... And then, and then they named the beer. I could see that. that. That's what I think. After it sits, after taste, it makes me think of that, those herbal flavors that come in after a, mm -hmm. a darker tea. Um, with just a little bit of char taste, you know, uh, a little bit of, yeah, like a char taste off of uh, some of the malts, you know, the darker malts. As well. Yeah. Well, what are you thinking about this, Dad? Um, this is this kind of tough. I mean, I'm it's it's fun. I'm intrigued by this. Um, I'm enjoying it. But mm -hmm. as far as rating it for black IPAs, the fact that it just does not have the bitterness or the tip, the you know, it does not have a strong hop flavor presence. It's probably giving you some earthy, um, like I said, earthy tones coming off of it. Some herbal tones come off of it, which some hops do. But not not really what you expect off of a black IPA. Um, so I can't rank it really high as a black IPA. Uh, i got to drop it down. It's unique and it's tasty, but I'm going all the way down to an 81. Oh, well, you, no, I'm not. Not gonna blame you. I mean, maybe we might be biased, or just myself, from some of the great beers we've had on the West Coast when it mm -hmm. comes to black IPAs, because I, were they founded out here? I can't remember. I, I don't know where they came out of, but let's face but, it, you know, one of our favorites is, is Firestone Walker and the Wookie uh, Jack, so how can you not be biased? But when it comes to black IPAs, I'm with you there. I'm going to drop it to an 82. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good beer. I mean, you've got to say, this This is an enjoyable beer. It's enjoyable But beer. when you put it in the black IPA category, I expect a little bit more hops, a little bit more resin. You know, mm -hmm. some, something where it's going to catch my attention and say, yeah, this this is a darker IPA. And On overall, I've got to drop down to... Um, I hate saying I gotta drop down to like a 76 for me. Uh, wow. Yeah. See, on the other hand, overall, I'm gonna raise my really? my thoughts on this because I think this is an 85 overall because hmm. it's so good tasting and it's well balanced and it's got everything going for it. It's just 
It just didn't hit the black IPA range, but it's almost going into that porter range, and huh. it's a drinkable beer. I mean, it's got some, you know, carbonation in it. It's got some porter in it. It's got a little bit of hoppiness. And so, to me, overall, I'm starting to enjoy it and just having a little fun with it. So, there you go. So, ah, what can we say? Another beer review, what can we say? <laughs> so, this is Clement's Homebrew. Coming at ya. So, from Clement's Homebrew. Life's too short. To drink cheap beer. We will catch you on another beer review. See you guys later. See ya.